Vam Tetmani is one of the most sought-after Brahmin priests in Bangkok. Today, he's been summoned to the newly renovated home of the Von Vichigun family. They've gathered their friends and laid a sumptuous table. All of this for a very special blessing of their home. But it's not for the house they live in, it's for the house that will be inhabited by the spirits of the land. And it's not a procedure to be rushed. For spirits can make exacting demands. They also might expect to be showered with riches and gifts. And not just on a day like today, but for all time. Spirit houses often reflect the houses or buildings they are protecting. They can be ornate or simple. It comes down to what the owner can afford. Some spirits like the wide open spaces, while others enjoy the hustle and bustle of the big city. So here's a very unusual one. This well, is quite different. Yes, you can see from the uh, building up here how um, similar the style is, and that's because of a phenomenon when you upgrade your premises, you need to upgrade the quality of the premises of the spirit of the land as well, otherwise they will get upset. The whole purpose is to, um, to keep the spirits happy. Author Philip Cornwell Smith writes about Thai culture. Now what we have here is a building that's very metal and glass oriented, so the spirit house following that is made of metal and glass. The spirits demand regular attention and early morning trips to the market are a must in order to get them the freshest and the best in foods and flowers. Paraji Yimkao is helping her cousin Sasatun with today's offerings. Everything has significance, from the type of food, the colours, even how it's served. Spirits don't just take, they give as well. I want something good happen with me, good fortune, good life, money, <laughs> everything, love. Yeah, something like that. Hey! Hi! I've already bought everything. Okay! Okay. Go ahead. Besides appealing to spirits at home, Thais also seek guidance from the gods at the numerous public shrines. Paraji usually meets her friend Punta Khan Patanawalan at the popular Erawan Shrine in downtown Bangkok. Now, what are you waiting for today? Uh, today I think I'll ask for a job. Uh -huh. What about your job? You do, good job. Uh -huh. Every day, thousands of Thais flock here to engage in an age-old ritual that fits in easily with their modern-day lives. The most imposing shrines are found in the centre of Bangkok's busy shopping district. This is one of the most popular, especially on Thursdays, when Bangkok's lovelorn youth come out in force. How 
how did this one become the love shrine? He's a god of almost everything, but Young Tai, specifically Young Tai, adopted him as being a god of love, possibly because this was a hangout of young people, and that when they come to a shrine, they make wishes about what they care about, which is where to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. <laughs> For centuries, Thais have been looking to the spirits and the gods to make them happy, to make them rich, and to help them find love. Sometimes the spirits come through. Since our visit, at least one of Paraji's wishes has come true. She's moved to Macau and is working at one of the casinos there. But even if they don't get their wishes, young Thais continue to embrace these rituals from the past, just as they embrace the future.